Hey guys, what's going on? It's Clever Techie. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you so much for being my subscribers. And thank you to all of my patrons for supporting Clever Techie. You guys have been motivating me to create more quality videos. I love you all. And I wish you the best Thanksgiving ever. Please spend some quality time with friends and family and take a break from the computers. In this video, we're going to be continuing covering top 100 PHP functions from 51 to 60 that you see highlighted here. Let's go ahead and get started with fclose. All right, so fclose closes an open file pointer and returns a boolean, so true or false, on success or failure. So the parameter that it takes is the resource handle that's opened by the fopen function. And even though the, the file will be closed at the end of the script execution, it's just a good practice to use fclose every time we open the file to free up the resources. So every time fopen is used, we also use fclose after we're done with writing to the file or whatever that we did to modify that file. All right, so a simple example, let's suppose we have a, a, let's suppose we're opening up the file here, new file, then we write some content to the file, and at the end we use the fclose function to close the handle. So just like that. And uh, if I run this function and go to the folder where we have created the file, you can see that the file has been created and uh, at the end we use fclose function. There's really nothing more to say about this function than it just uh, closes the file pointer open by fopen. Let's move on to the next one, which is isInt. And this function finds whether the type of a variable is an integer and returns true or false based on uh, if the variable is an integer or not. And of course, it takes in a mixed uh, variable as the data type. So let me create the array with a bunch of uh, values here, and then we'll test them for integers. All right, so we got these values inside of the array and uh, the only integer here is 23. So this first value here, the rest do not qualify as integers. So let's go ahead and um, run the int val or is int function on this. So I'm gonna create the for each loop and just run through all the values. And then I'm, I'm using the php.nets example here to output the values along with a representation using the var export function that we used in previous videos to see what the actual representation is instead of the value. And then we're gonna var dump is int value. So this is the part which is going to evaluate the value for true or false. If the value is an integer. So I'm going to refresh here. And as you can see, we can see the actual representation of the value here and uh, whether it's uh, whether it's an int or not. So the only one that's an int is the first one, which is the number 23, because the rest of them are either in quotes, they're float, they're null, they're boolean, etc., etc., etc. So the only one that qualifies as an integer is 23. All right, let's move on to the next function, which is isFile. And this is a really simple function that checks if the uh, string provided is a file or not. So we can just use var dump is file 
and then provide the path to any file that's located on your computer. I'm gonna just uh, point to this new file that we've created earlier and just paste this directory here. Refresh the page and you can see that the uh, that the is file is returning true. And uh, if that was some kind of random file here, refresh, it's a false, it's not a file. So that's the simplicity of that function. And the next one is array slice, which is used to extract a slice of the array. So let's go ahead and create the array and then we'll be slicing it up with array slice to extract the chunks from the array and we'll see exactly how it works. So I'm gonna create a new array here called spiral dynamics. And spiral dynamics is a pretty awesome model for human evolution. You guys should check it out. So it's got all these different stages in it. The first one is beige, then there's purple, red, blue, orange, green, yellow, turquoise. Okay, so let's go ahead and print out this array just to see what it looks like in its original form. So we got beige, purple, red, blue, orange, green, yellow, turquoise. And uh, now we can use array slice to extract the chunks of the array. So if we wanted to extract blue from yellow, we would do one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three. So we provide four to three because, okay, so here's how it works. Array slice returns the array, which is gonna be uh, the chunk of the array that we provide here. And uh, the first parameter that it ex accepts is the array that we're gonna be extracting the chunks from. And then the offset, which is the position to start. So if we're gonna be using offset one, two, three, four, that's gonna be this value here. And then we provide the length. So if the length, length is one, two, it's gonna extract blue and orange. So by uh, specifying array, then the number four and two, we should get blue and orange. So let's go ahead and uh, see if that is the case indeed. So we're gonna create a new array called chunk and use array slice, spiral dynamics, three, two, and then we're gonna print out the chunk. So as you can see, we are extracting blue and orange. One, two, three, four. So as you can see, we're extracting blue and orange. Zero, one, two, three, and then one, two. So the number two here is uh, specifying how many values to extract from this position. So once we're at this position, we can say how many values you want to extract. Do we just want one? So if, if it's one, it's just gonna return blue. If it's two, it's gonna be returned orange. If it's three, it's gonna return blue, orange, and green. If it's five, it's gonna return all the way uh, all the values until turquoise. And we can also leave this value blank, and that will mean that we want to extract all the values starting from position three. So it's gonna be the same thing. We can also use the negative integer here, and it's gonna start counting from the end of the array. So if we wanted to extract yellow, we can say negative two, one. So it's gonna count from negative one, negative two, and then one, which is just yellow. And if we wanted yellow and turquoise, we would say negative two and two. And then we have those two. All right, so that's how that works. And also let me give you another example here with uh, associative and uh, numeric values. So I'm gonna create something similar here, but with uh, the mixed keys. 
So instead of just a numeric array, I'm going to say stage one, which is a associative key. Purple. And then the rest of them, I'm going to make them numeric. So that's what I mean by saying mixed array. So now let's see what happens if we do this. I'm gonna use array slice, spiral dynamics, zero four. Fresh, and so now we got beige, purple, red, and blue. So you can see that it's counting from um, from the first one, and it doesn't matter if the key is uh, is associative or numeric. So just to keep that in mind. All right, that's array slice, and now let's move on to the next function, which is prag match all, and this is one of my favorite functions that I've been using a lot to scrape data from websites and for this I want to show you guys a practical example of how we can use this function so I'm gonna to go to a website called coinmarketcap.com which is a website used to keep track of cryptocurrencies and here if we wanted to extract all these names of all the cryptocurrencies here we can use pragmatch all and then I'm gonna go ahead and copy this HTML copy HTML and then just uh, paste it in here. So we're gonna use this HTML to match the content on the page. And before we use pragmatch all, we gotta load the website, so we're gonna initialize curl, which is used to load web pages. And we're also gonna set some curl options. The first one is the URL, which is the URL that we wanna load. CoinMarketCap.com. The next option we're gonna set is curl opt return transfer. And we're gonna set it to true because we want to return the transfer as content and store it in a variable instead of outputting it as a web page. And the final one, since uh, we're loading HTTPS SSL protocol, we're gonna say curl opt SSL verify peer and set it to false. Then we're gonna store everything inside the content using curl execute and then let's go ahead and uh, test if this worked. So we're gonna print out the content and it should print out the coin market cap website directly on our script script page. And um, yep, there it is. It's loading all the content. And now we're ready to use pragmatch all to match uh, the HTML content of the names of the cryptocurrencies. All right, so let's first of all look it up in the PHP manual to break down how the function works. Okay, so it performs a global regular expression match. It's going to return uh, the integer based on how many characters the string that we're matching. But we're going to be storing everything inside that matches array, which is an optional parameter here. And uh, the first parameter that we're going to be specifying is a regular expression pattern. And then the string, which is going to be our content. So it's all the HTML content that we're loading. And uh, then we're going to be storing everything inside of the matches array. So. Let's see how that works. All right, so prag match all. The first parameter is a regular expression, so it's gonna be this HTML that we've uh, copied earlier. I'm actually gonna use single quotes here as literal string. 
and we, we gotta surround it with uh, exclamation marks. Also, we're gonna use some uh, regular expression patterns here because this value here can be anything. So, in order to match anything, we use dot, star, and question mark. And if you guys don't understand regular expression, please look up my video on the regular expressions that explains uh, what all these patterns mean. Then, this is the value that we want to capture here, which is the name of the cryptocurrency. So we're going to use parentheses to capture the value. And then, again, dot star and question mark, which can be any character at all. So now, this is our regular expression, and we should be capturing the value, which is the name of the cryptocurrency. The next one is the content, which is all the HTML that we've loaded. And then we're gonna match, we're gonna store everything inside of the matches array. So let's see how the matches looks like now. Just gonna print it out, reload the page, and we should have all of the cryptocurrencies stored inside of the array. And uh, it works. Here's all the cryptocurrency names inside of the array. And uh, the reason it's got two is because the first inside of the match is zero is uh, where the whole regular expression match is going to be stored. So it's gonna be all of this along with the HTML. So if I go to view page source, you can see that it also captured the HTML along with a currency name. So that's the first key that is stored inside of the matches array. And the second one is, is the one that's captured inside of the parentheses that we used here, which is only gonna be just the name of the cryptocurrencies. Uh, and that's what we actually want here. So if we print out just the matches one, we're just gonna get the the array with uh, the cryptocurrency names, which is what we wanted. And that's how pragmatch all works. Let's move on to the next function, which is uc first. And this one is very, very simple. All it means is capitalize the first letter of the string. So if we had clever techie, Echo you see first name and that's going to output clever techie just like that and right now I'm just gonna comment out this part so that it doesn't take too long to load our code so there it is clever techie and another example is if we had a name with all capital letters like this and we wanted to get clever techie with just the uh, letter capitalized. Here's what we could do for that. So this alone here is not going to work, obviously, because it's just gonna output clever techie with all capital letters. But if we combine it with str to lower, then we'll get clever techie with the first letter capitalized if combined with uc words. So it's a pretty cool trick if we wanted to convert all caps to just the first letter capitalized, just like uh, in the first example. All right, so that's UC first. Let's move on to the next one, which is int val. So it gets the integer value of a variable. And uh, let's go ahead and create the array of values for this one. And we're gonna use number 42, 4.2, 42 is a string, plus 42, minus 42, null, 0, 42, and false. And then we're just going to use a simple for each loop to run through all the values. And here we're going to use int val to evaluate the value for integer. Okay, refresh the page, and here we got 42. Okay, so 
here uh, the first value is 42 which is a which is just the integer the second one it converted the float to 4 because 4.2 is a float it's a decimal number and uh, the integer of the float is just 4 next it converted the string to 42 then we converted a positive number plus 42 to just 42 and uh, the negative one stayed negative the null is converted to 0 uh, the string version of 0 42 is converted to 42 and false is converted to 0 so it just gets the integer value of the uh, of the variable and that's how it works there are other examples that you guys can look up at php.net manual all right so the next one is uh, another simple function called uh, str repeat and uh, i just learned about it so all it does it just repeats the so all it does is it repeats the string as uh, specified by the second parameter so i came up with this random string here it doesn't really mean anything it's just um the string that I came up with and then um, so we've specified the string as a first parameter and for the second parameter we specify how many times to repeat that string and so that's exactly what it did here it repeated the string 10 times and that's really all it does so it's pretty fun function to play around with and see uh, what kind of a uh, character art you can come up with by repeating it uh, as many times as you like. The next function is serialize. And I also just learned about this one. It's used to create a storable representation of a value. And uh, it returns a string. And uh, here's how it works. Okay, so let's suppose let's let me just give you a basic example first uh using a string so echo serialize clever techie let's see what this does first okay so you can see that it converted clever techie to s colon 13 colon clever techie and then semicolon so what that means is uh, we can use this as a a uh, storable data because here what we know about the string with an s we know that the value of the variable is a string and that it has 13 characters one two three four five six seven seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen so we know it's a string it's got 13 characters and this is the format that is going to be stored in so that's the format for the string s size and then value and it ends with a semicolon another value that we can store is an integer and integer is stored just like i value and then semicolon so echo serialize 100 for example So i, which is an integer, colon, 100, semicolon. And uh, another example I want to give you guys is the array. So array is stored like this. A, size of the array, and then colon, key definition, colon, value definition. And then colon and uh, curly bracket. So let's go ahead and use our... Um, spiral dynamics array that we created earlier and first let me just print it out just to see what it looks like and then i'm gonna echo out serialize spiral dynamics all right let's see what we get here okay so this is our array right and uh, here we have an associative key the first three keys of the array are string and they're associative and the next array keys are going to be integers and they're going to be um, they also have a string as their values so here we have an our array which is a and number eight which is the number of keys inside of the array so so far so good for the format a size next we got a key definition which is uh which is s6 so s6 is a string 
and it's the number of characters in stage one one two three four five six and so that that's what's meant by the key definition and then the next one is the value definition which is as five so that's beige uh, there's five characters inside the beige and it's a string and then colon and the actual value beige so you can see that uh, the next two um, array keys are also strings but then we got an integer starting from um, starting from blue so it's i0 which is the integer here and then um, and then s3 which is red and then we got all these other values so it's just a handy way of uh, storing these kinds of uh, variable data because we know a lot more about the structure of the variable than just uh, its basic parts so that's how serialize works and now let's move on to the last function which is array filter all right so this function is not to be confused with array map which iterates through all the array values and then returns the modified value this one just returns the true or false statement uh, which is inside the fun which is inside the callable function so we have an array filter returns the array the first parameter is an array and then we uh, create the callable function okay so let me just give you a simple example uh, let's create a function and call it filter and it's going to take in one parameter as its uh, value and so filter function just uh, evaluates the value for true or false so we can say value equals 42 so if the value is equals if the value is going to be equal to 42 it's going to return that value and if it returns false it's not going to return anything so we can say result equals array filter and we can run this function on our values array that we created earlier and we specify the values array as our first parameter and the callable function as the second parameter. So um, just to know, just to remember what the values function are, we're going to print it out here and then also going to print out the results. All right, let's see what this does. Refresh. Okay, so now we got all these values, right? And um, remember that some of the values inside of the um, of this function are null and false. So those are the values that are being removed from our um, from our array. And also, you may have noticed that the float has also been uh, removed because it's not equal to 42. But uh, the ones that have been evaluated to equal 42 have been returned. And uh, if we wanted to use a strict parameter, strict evaluation, we can also use this kind of operand, which is triple equal sign. And then we will, all, we will only get uh, the 42 as the literal integer. So all these other ones should be removed as well. And now we're getting just the 42. So that's how filter works. And uh, just not to be confused with array map. And that's it for these 10 functions. In the next video, we're going to be continuing covering our functions from 61 to 70. Once again, I wish you guys happy Thanksgiving. Please spend some time with your family and friends and enjoy yourselves. And if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Clever Techie out.